So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome back to another video in which we're going to see how layering works in Docker more or less. So let's see if I build um, Docker, this first Docker image again, what happens? Hit enter. Oops, I should be in Docker. And now there we go. Boom. It happens instantaneously. Now let's see why is that? Well, you can see what happens in case of Docker when you're using a Docker file. What happens is that Docker, when you send it to the build context, to the Docker daemon, Docker would split this file into different layers. So this would be layer one. This would be layer two. Let's say I have a bunch of more run commands. Run app get install. Maybe this. I can have run app get install um i don't know screen maybe why not right so that's all so we have in this case we have more or less four layers in our program and uh, now if i oops if i run this you're gonna see it starts with five steps Step number one is pulls Ubuntu. Step number two is this gets this, this gets this, this, right, and so on and so forth. But you can see that for the first three, first two pull requests for run, it uses cache, right? And for the rest, it just installs it from the uh, internet. Now, if I do it again, you're gonna see it does it instantaneously because it has all the layer cache. Now, what's happening here? Well, what Docker do is that on top of this, in a regular system, how you're gonna imagine this is, well, I have a Mac OS, I install, you know, just do a brew install of Git or something like that. It installs it on the system. How Docker does it is that this is a different image. After what happens, what happens after this is a different image, call a layer. What happens after this is a different image, another layer. What happens after this is different layer, so, for, so on and so forth. So what I should rather say is instead of this as layer two, this is actually layer one plus two. This before layer three is layer one plus two plus three. Layer four, one plus two plus three plus four. Now, what happens if I change something in layer two? For example, um, what happens instead of git, now I want to install, uh, let's say wget. So I have changed something in layer two. Now layer three and four, although we as humans know that it is independent of installation of wget, but Docker might assume that, you know, this command after layer two depends on what happened in the second layer. So Docker would invalidate the cache of the commands below them but obviously it knows that above this, it does not really matter because this command was never executed anyway. So the state of system should not depend on this particular command for the above layers. But for the below layers, it is not sure. So it would invalidate the cache of these two commands and it will run these commands again. So if I run this again, you're gonna see that it happens correctly. Step one happens correctly. Step two happens using cache again. Step three is changed. Now that is changed, then obviously it would run. And because step three is changed, it will invalidate the cache for step four and step five as well. So if we see step four runs it again, step four also runs again, and step five um, also runs again. You can see it removes the intermediate layer of caching and it creates it again. So yeah, that's how it works. And again, if you do it, now you already have the cache, so it won't work. Now if I change it to git, and if I run this again, you're gonna see that it does not really run it again. The reason for that is Docker heavily relies on caching. So we already have this ID, uh, the output of, out of, after what happens after this command as the cached version. So we're gonna use that cache and go back, go forward. You're gonna see if we have cache for this also, we're gonna go forward. And yes, we indeed had cache for that from the earlier command. So yeah, we are good there. So yeah, that, that's pretty much how layering in Docker works when you're creating an image. 
and it's pretty powerful feature of Docker which would save you tons of time when you're working with applications for example installation of node modules. So you only want to install node modules if package.json file or package.json file changes. Otherwise you do not really want to touch node modules installation because it's, it's relatively a time consuming process and you do not really want to you know if you make a little change in your image state then you do not really want to install the node modules again and again so yeah that's that's pretty much it uh, how you can make use of run command with uh, how layering works actually and yeah that's all for this video if you liked it don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you then in the next one